The ZF9HP transaxle has two unique clutches that I've never seen in an automatic transmission uh, as far as a regular planetary gear set style automatic transmission. These two clutches are called dog clutches and they pretty much act like a manual transmission as far as engaging gears, uh, two gears that need to connect together to allow for power flow uh, to take place. Uh, for an automatic transmission, that's that's a unique thing. And this nine-speed transaxle with everything all so compact into one little case uh, uses these dog clutches. And it's a it's a very interesting and, and unique design. I want to show you these two dog clutches now. Uh, we've got the input shaft, which is really the only shaft of this transmission other than the idler shaft and the, the final drive. But all nine gears are accomplished through this shaft. Uh, this We've got the splines over here for... Uh, the connection to the turbine and the torque converter, and then the the shaft is the rest of the transmission. Well, back here on the, the back side of this input shaft is what's called the A dog clutch. So every clutch in this transmission is lettered A through E, uh, or A through F. And the A clutch and the F clutch are dog clutches. The other four clutches, there's two of them that are driving clutches that cause things to rotate, and there's two of them that are brakes that stop things from rotating. So the A dog clutch in the back of this uh, transaxle on this uh, input shaft here is going to slide forward like this or slide back. So it can go forward or back uh, just like that, but it's controlled hydraulically. And so in the back of this input shaft, there's a hole and hydraulic fluid is going to come into there and push on a, a piston in the center of this shaft that this dog clutch sleeve is connected to and it'll push it forward. And then on the front of this input shaft, in between these two seals right here, is an oil feed hole, and it feeds oil up the center of the shaft and to the other side of this piston that the dog clutch sleeve is connected to and slides it uh, back. So I want to demonstrate uh, that for you with just some uh, compressed air. So let me grab the, the air here and get things situated where you can you can see it. I'm going to manually slide the dog clutch sleeve back to the released position. And then I'm just going to take some compressed air, come into the hole in the back of the input shaft and give it uh, a little bit of air pressure. So here we go. So that moves it forward. I can push it back. Compressed air or hydraulic fluid uh, will push it forward. So uh, once it's pushed forward, then we need to be able to push it backwards also, because when it's pushed forward, it engages into an internal gear or annulus gear, ring gear, whatever you want to call it. ZF calls it an annulus gear. It engages into this annulus gear right here. There are some little teeth down inside of there that the dog clutch uh, engages with, and it will lock this gear to the input shaft and cause it to turn the same speed. And I'll show you that here in just a moment, but for now, I just want to show you the releasing of the dog clutch. So we've got a hole right here. I'm just going to come in with some air and release the clutch, the dog clutch. So it pushes it back. So I can push it forward, it pushes it back. So we use compressed air or hydraulic pressurized fluid to move it forward and to move it backwards. Now, as I mentioned, we've got this annulus gear here that fits on to our input shaft. And all by itself, it just sits up here. It has a sleeve that causes it to just sit there and it is not connected to the input shaft. As you can see, I'm holding the input shaft from turning this annulus gear, which also it functions as a sun gear on the outside of it because uh, there are four planetary gear sets in this transaxle, is not connected to the um, input shaft. But then if I come along and take the compressed air and simulate hydraulic fluid pressure, applying that dog clutch sleeve, and it has to be synchronized just right to where it, um, there we go, to where the teeth line up. So the TCM synchronizes the speed of this annulus gear with the speed of the input shaft so that they're the same. And then it engages the 
uh, dog clutch sleeve and now as you can see it rotates the entire shaft they are connected together if i apply power from the torque converter it forces the annulus gear which is also a sun gear uh, to rotate with it if i come back over here and release the dog clutch now i can spin the input shaft and the annulus gear is not connected to it so it's a real basic uh, connection. Unlike a manual transmission, there is no brass synchronizer ring or fiber synchronizer ring assembly. Uh, there's just simply a clutch pack back here that I'll show you that will lock the speed of the input shaft to the speed of this annulus gear. And then at that point, it will engage the A dog clutch. So that's the A dog clutch. But remember, there are two dog clutches in this uh, transaxle. So the next one is the B dog clutch. Now, the A dog clutch that we just got done looking at is a driving dog clutch. So when it applies, it forces something to turn. The, the F dog clutch or, that we're going to look at next is a braking dog clutch, and it will stop a sun gear from rotating that was rotating. So let me get that uh, set up. Let me just slide this out of the way. And the dog clutch that... Uh, the F dog clutch that we are going to uh, talk about is uh, in the front of the transaxle. There is a, uh, a sun gear right here that's part of a Simpson planetary gear set in the front that all by itself, when it sits up in here, it is not connected to anything. It can uh, spin freely and up inside of this stationary housing, this housing here, it's cast iron, it bolts to the transaxle case. Um, this is our, our output gear, by the way, that uh, drives the idler gear and the, and the final drive gear. But up inside of here is a sleeve, uh, a piston and a sleeve um, with teeth that are going to engage with these little teeth uh, on the sun gear. So this is the F dog clutch and the F dog clutch teeth. And so I'm going to show you how that uh, applies and releases. Uh, on the end of this housing here, there are two hydraulic passages. These two passages, uh, one of them, this one right here, applies the dog clutch. So it moves this piston with the teeth forward, or I'm sorry, towards the, the back of the transaxle. This one releases it. So I'm, I'm going to demonstrate uh, that for you here. So let me get the camera uh, positioned where you can you can see that. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in so you can see the teeth a little bit better here. So these are the dog clutch teeth. It's just, dog clutch is just another name for uh, little gear teeth that connect to each other. Uh, we've got this, this set of teeth here on the end of this sun gear, and then we have a set of dog clutch teeth down inside of the sleeve here. And when this sleeve, when this piston moves forward, it's going to engage with the dog clutch teeth of the sun gear and lock the sun gear to this cast iron housing and prevent it from rotating. So let me grab, uh, let me get this set up to where we can see what's going on here. Here we go. You can see the teeth down inside here. I'm going to take some uh, compressed air and come in on the applied side, which, oh, by the way, uh, just a quick demonstration here, a little bearing the sun gear. The sun gear is free to spin at this moment. I can rotate the sun gear. But now, if I come in and apply hydraulically, apply that dog clutch. So here we go. So do you see the sleeve right here came up? It was down about seven, eight millimeters uh, in the bore. Now if I put the sun gear down in, it's locked solid. It does not uh, rotate. And now if I come and let me take that back out so you can see the sleeve right here. Watch this sleeve, it's going to drop, drop down. I'm gonna hit some compressed air to it. Down it goes, and now I can put the sun gear back in and it rotates freely. So the purpose of this dog clutch is to 
when it's applied, which it's applied in first gear through seventh gear, when it's applied, it will hold this sun gear from rotating. And this is an extra tall sun gear because the front two gear sets of this transaxle are a Simpson gear set. And a Simpson gear set is known because it has a common sun gear to two planetary uh, gear sets. As a matter of fact, these two planetary gear sets in, in the front of this transaxle are absolutely identical. They have the exact uh, number of teeth on the ring or the ring gear, annulus gear, whatever you want to call it, and the sun gear. So they, there are two identical gear sets that share a common sun gear. Um, that is a, a Simpson gear set. Now, it, uh, there are a lot of Simpson gear sets out there that have a different size sun gear, but the sun gears are still connected together, and that's what defines a uh, Simpson uh, gear set. Uh, while we're here looking at this uh, F dog clutch, uh, I want you to notice that the, this gear right here that drives the, the idler gear and the final drive and moves the vehicle, it has little teeth on it right here. And those teeth are going to connect to a planetary carrier that will mesh on here. This is not the dog clutch. I've seen magazine articles where they say, this is the dog clutch. This is not the dog clutch. These are just teeth that connect the uh, planet carrier to this output gear. So if this output gear moves at all, then the vehicle is going to move, uh, obviously forward or, or backwards. So we have two dog clutches in this transaxle, an A dog clutch in the back that when it engages, it will start a sun, not a sun gear, it will start a ring gear or annulus gear uh, rotating. And then the F dog clutch here in the front of the transaxle that stops something from rotating. All right, now we'll take a look at some other parts.